Hey everyone, Alan here from the Wild Rift team. We're back once again with your introduction to the latest patch. For this episode, we'll be taking a deep look into 2022, including our upcoming priorities as a team and what you can expect from us this year. Let's dive right into the state of the game. We believe we've made some good progress over the past few patches, with game balance and champion balance in a decent place, and stability and latency improving for many of you. That said, we hear you and know that there are still issues with game fairness, including AFK and intentional feeding. We also want to give you more visibility on when we penalize players based on your reports. These are really high priorities with the team, even if we don't have specific updates today. We're still working on releasing into South Asia as well as our console version of the game, but we won't have any updates on those in 2022. We appreciate your patience while we've been working through these and we look forward to providing more news when we can. Today, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about gameplay. Looking at patch 3.1, we're taking a big step forward with our largest gameplay overhaul yet. Wild Rift is going Elemental. Elemental Rift is an evolution of the current Wild Rift map, adapting the dragon and terrain mechanics from League PC, but with a few streamlined changes. This will look a little different from what you saw in January because we're looking to achieve a few new things. In addition to team comps, runes and item builds, we want to make games play out differently each time. Between objective team coordination and individual ability to impact a game, Elemental Rift will give us more tools to make sure that the game remains dynamic and fun. We're also looking to even out the gap between coordinated teams and solo players. We have a few ideas on how we can achieve this and trying a variety of changes in the future will help us hit these goals in the most satisfying way possible. With a huge change like this, we want to be prepared to make adjustments, so we're thinking of Elemental Rift as part of a testing phase. In patch 3.2, you might see a version of it that looks very different from what you'll see today because we're still exploring different options and deciding what will work best. Wherever we land, we'll be keeping a close eye on the effects of these changes, and we're looking forward to hearing your feedback. In this first version of Elemental Rift, slaying each dragon offers a unique buff, but taking enough dragons also grants the dragon's soul, a powerful buff that matches one of the dragon's elements. We're still working on how many kills it should take, but in this test run, Dragon Soul will trigger after the third dragon, so you'll be able to obtain three buffs along with your soul. Infernal Dragon now grants bonus attack damage and ability power, and the Infernal Soul creates explosions around your abilities and attacks, dealing bonus adaptive damage in a circle around your target. Mountain Dragon increases your armor and magic resist, and the Mountain Soul grabs a shield after not taking damage for a short while. Ocean Dragon restores health over time, and Ocean Soul restores more health when dealing damage to enemies. The first two dragons are random, then after that, all dragons will match the element of the rift. You'll always know which dragon type is coming next before it spawns, so you can prepare to fight for it or trade a different objective if it doesn't fit your team comp. You might have noticed that we didn't cover one element. With the arrival of Elemental Rift, we're removing Cloud Dragon. During our playtests, we felt that Cloud Dragon offered mostly hidden power that was hard to notice in-game, making it less interesting to play around and less enticing for objective-minded teams. Without Cloud Dragon, we'll have extra space for the more exciting elements to shine. You'll also see that Dragons, Rift Herald and Barons spawn later in the game, and Dragons will be a bit easier to take. By building more time into objective spawns, we're hoping to strike a better balance between team performance and individual play. Players will have more options to choose how they want to play the early game, rather than needing to rush the objective right away. We've also totally revamped Elder Dragon, making it much closer to its League PC kin. After the Dragon Soul has been taken by a team, Elder Dragons will be up for grabs, offering a game-ending, true damage burn effect and executing enemies when they drop to low health. If your team picks up Elder, it's time to fight. After the second dragon is slain in each game, 
the map terrain changes significantly, offering new gameplay opportunities that match the third dragon's element. The Infernal Rift burns away brush and opens new pathways to red and blue buff. This can offer an advantage to the winning team for deep warding and aggressive invades, but also means the path back to your base is much shorter. The Mountain Rift forges new terrain in the jungle, as well as a defensive wall in the front of the Dragon Pit. This rift offers new flanking routes and ways to force your opponents into a bottleneck for an AoE explosion. The Ocean Rift spawns more brush across the map with bumper crops of honey fruit. Use the brushes for surprise ambushes or just put on some rainy lo-fi beats and heal up for the next fight. Whether you're hopeful or nostalgic, we know there are many gameplay elements that players love about this map and we aspire to keep the spirit of the Rift true for Wild Rift players. However, we're also hoping to address some of the gameplay pain points you may have encountered. So, We'll be testing this rift during limited time windows in a totally separate queue during patches 3.1 and 3.2. This will allow us to monitor and make adjustments before it replaces the existing Wild Rift map fully in our pre-season in patch 3.3 later this year. Until then, enjoy the current rift in ranked and esports broadcasts as we head towards the Icons Global Championship. And again, we're exploring versions of Elemental Rift that might look different from this one, or even from what's currently in League PC. Expect to hear more about that in the future. We're looking forward to seeing how your games play out with raw Elemental power at your disposal, and we can't wait to hear your feedback on these changes when they roll out for testing. Shen, the Eye of Twilight, will be teleporting in very soon. Shen wields his Blades of Steel and Spirit to protect Ionia and its allies in the Barren Lane. His Spirit Blade follows him and grants him more damage against his foes and protection when his team needs it most. Shen isn't a particularly stealthy Kinku, but he makes up for it with defensive options and hard crowd control. Slide on into the enemy team to taunt them and block basic attacks with Spirit's Refuge to nullify enemy carries. With extreme tankiness and the ability to stand united with allies from anywhere on the map, Shen maintains the balance for his team at any cost. Tipping the scales in support and mid lane, Karma, the Enlightened One, empowers her teammates and slows her foes. Karma has a couple of changes from her PC version, with a greater focus on her Battle Mage playstyle. We thought we'd go into a little more detail with Karma to highlight some of her differences. First up, we've moved Karma's ultimate to her passive. Every spell Karma casts, she gains a stack of Mantra, and at three stacks, her next ability is empowered. Inner Flame fires a blast of energy, dealing damage and slowing enemies. When empowered, it leaves a slow field, which explodes a second time. Focused Resolve now tethers up to two nearby champions. If those champions fail to escape the tether range, they're rooted for a short time. When empowered, this ability forms an additional tether, forcing those enemies to scatter. If any of the tethers aren't broken in time, the enemies get a mega root for a longer period. Karma's third ability, Inspire, grants an ally a shield that offers movement speed. Under the effect of Mantra, the shield could empower an additional nearby ally. Finally, Karma's brand new ultimate, Transcendent Embrace, forms a ring of spirit energy, dealing damage, slowing and knocking enemies into the center if they're caught on the edge. We want to give Karma players more ways to control her enemies throughout the game, and Transcendent Embrace is the centerpiece of that playstyle. In testing, we called it the Donut. While this year is starting off a little quieter, we're going to ramp up the amount of champs later in 2022, and we wanted to give you a small taste of who you can expect. This year, we've started with Peace, Harmony, and Fluffy Cats. But 2022 is the year of the Edgelord. Later this year, we'll be revisiting some battle-scarred locations in Runeterra. Next up, we're heading to Zorn, Bilgewater, and Noxus. Nothing personal, kid. We'll see you there. Our mission this year for gameplay is to make games more satisfying and motivating to play, so we're focusing on competition, social play, skill and challenge. That sounds pretty broad, but giving you more freedom and skill expression in your games is a huge part of that effort. And of course, keeping the game balanced is a top priority too. We're giving more options to fighters in this patch with the introduction of new items. 
Divine Sundra is the perfect option for champs looking to brawl who want some extra health and damage. We want to offer a sturdier alternative for bruisers that traditionally build Trinity Force. After using an ability, your next basic attack will deal a percent of your target's maximum health as bonus damage. If that target is another champion, you will also heal for some of the damage you dealt. Holebreaker is for champs who want more durability and split-pushing power. While no allied champions are near you, you'll gain bonus armor and magic resist and deal more damage against structures. You'll also give a mini boost to nearby minions so they can keep you company on your split-pushing journey. Also in this patch, we're making some small changes to other items. Fimble Winter will be more closely aligned with its PC version, offering its trademark shield on slows as well as hard crowd control. Death Stance is becoming an AD and armor item, as we felt that there were too many unimpactful choices offered by the AD and health items in Wild Rift. Fulfilling its original intended purpose, we're reworking Solari Charge Blaze passive to make it more appealing to monks. Hexet Mega Drive is getting a significant buff for champions that can pull off several stuns at once, like Morgana or Alistar. Pulling off the perfect CC chain could mean you get to cast your active item multiple times in a fight. In addition to a whole host of items, we wanted to take a close look at the support role. We know supports have needed more love for a while, so in this update, we're rebalancing support summoner spells to give players more active options in the laning phase and in team fights. First, we're strengthening the initial slow on exhaust to give more offensive and defensive options. Heal will now grant more health to the healed ally and less to the user. And Ignite is retuned to be more effective in the early game and weaker in the late game. One idea we're thinking about for 2022 is theming our major patches to address specific game balance or systemic changes. Next patch, we're hoping to have some updates on map vision, and we're also looking at the impact of our current rune set. Which system should we look at next? Leave us some suggestions in the comments. The next season of Ranked will soon be underway, and that means there's a new glorious skin up for grabs. Just make sure she doesn't grab you first. With the start of the new year of Ranked, we're giving the glorious theme a makeover. Glorious Crimson Evelyn is your skin reward for this season. The best is, don't let her flop. Starting with Evelyn, you can also grab what we're calling a weapon augment for glorious skins in the rank store to serve even harder. This visual update empowers the Chosen Champ's source of power to recognize your commitment to the climb. With our explorations coming to an end, many mysteries are still left unsolved. Thankfully, we've hired some private expertise as Psychic Detective Senna is on the case and making her debut in this wild past, just in time to help us get to the bottom of this mind-bending world. In Champ Select, if you're in the jungle, you'll now automatically be assigned Smite. This way, you won't face final boss level one red buff if you accidentally switched away. We're introducing the news tab. Patch notes, game news, community events, esports and videos are now easily accessible through the app. As we mentioned in January, we're going to be running more events this year with less downtime between each one. But part of that is going to be varying the types of events we run and experimenting with different ways to play. To give you a taste of what's happening later this year in Wild Rift, we'll be revisiting High Noon, Pool Party, Pulse Fire, and maybe even further beyond, further beyond, further beyond, further beyond. Sorry, I got distracted. Our biggest focuses this year will be on our shared moments with League PC, like Lunar New Year. We'll collaborate a few times a year on huge, unforgettable moments with new skins, stories, and more. Those larger events will stay under wraps for now. Now, let's get back to it and showcase some of the skins headed your way in patch 3.1.
be back in May with more updates and announcements. We wish you good luck on your climb, harness the power of dragons, and get ready to defend Runeterra's connection to the spirit realm. Thanks everyone, and we'll see you on the Rift.